In today's video, I'm covering Bitcoin and its halving, the new and improved stimulus, and how those two are kind of tying in with one another. If you have any questions about either of those things, stay tuned and hopefully I can make it more clear for you. Welcome back everybody, my name is Sean Lucas and today we're going to be looking at the time on events that have happened and still might happen with Bitcoin and the new and improved second stimulus bill. But first, if you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It means the world for me and it helps out small creators like myself tremendously. Secondly, if you find out that you do like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, it lets me and the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing something right and more people should see it. And lastly, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, leave those in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get them to them. All right, guys, I'm going to be a little honest here. This video might be a little off brand for me, but I did mention Bitcoin once in one of my previous videos. So I didn't think it was too far of a stretch to to cover it a little bit more. Now I'm going to assume most of you know what Bitcoin is, or, or at least heard of it a little bit. So I'm not going to do too much uh, background information on it. However, I'm going to stumble upon a little bit of information with me and Bitcoin and how that sort of correlates with uh with the rest of the video so early in sophomore year of college so i guess late 2017 uh a video popped up on my youtube homepage, and it was about a guy mining bitcoin it was basically him showing off how many computers he had and how they were all mining bitcoin he explained to the viewers like myself how he was just paying for the equipment and the electricity bill and he was letting the computers do the work now, it did sound pretty intriguing, but I never really got into it. However, that video did make me want to read up on Bitcoin more. Now, I'm pretty sure that the YouTube algorithm may have been a little messed up during that time, suggesting the same videos to the people in the same location. Because my buddy Patch, who I've talked about in previous videos, had seen that video just the same day. Now, he, like many others, tried actually mining the bits, and my apartment collectively uh, vetoed that business idea because it tripled our electricity bill for that month. Now, Mr. Patch and I kind of came to the same conclusion, that Bitcoin is a great idea in theory, but we both thought it would be hard for the public to widely accept it. Now, let me remind everybody, during this time when Mr. and Patch and I were talking about it, Bitcoin was at $3,200 per coin. Yada, yada, yada. Everybody knows this part of the story where Bitcoin became a household name and jumped up to $20,000 per, 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 per Bitcoin. However, people are confused on this one thing that happens every four years, and it had recently passed in this year, 2020. It's called the halving. Now, the halving, like I said, happens every four years. And basically what it does is it cut the rewards for miners in half. So for example, before 2020, or I guess before the halving of 2020, miners would gain 12.5 bitcoins every time they broke off a little piece of the blockchain and i believe this is to maintain the balance between miners and how many bitcoins are actually left for reference there are only 21 million bitcoins forever and as of right now 18.5 million of that 22 has already been mined leaving only 2.5 million so lowering the reward for the miners will lengthen the process of completely mining the all the 21 million bitcoins but now with the having each block the miners break of the blockchain only rewards them with 6.25 bitcoin but something interesting that happens after every having is actually really cool and i just had to share it usually what happens since 2012 after a having is there is a huge sell-off and then there's a steady rise to record highs and this has stayed true for the previous two halvings. This time in 2020, there seems that there was a lot more people aware that the halving was going on. However, they all thought there was either gonna be a huge spike in price or a huge drop in price. But this is part of the huge misunderstanding. It really doesn't affect the price immediately. You guys are probably wondering, and this is why I wanted to bring it up, is how does the stimulus play a role? As you might know, the second stimulus bill has been talked about, and I've already covered on why I'm not a huge fan of the first one in this 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 video right here and before people get upset with me I, I i understand that people need money and that's not why i'm upset with it but all those points i covered in that video right there are kind of doubled now if the average inflation rate in usd before the first stimulus bill was two percent per year i wonder what it's going to be now with the second stimulus bill being passed eventually because i don't know about you guys but three trillion dollars seems like a lot of money that we don't have now i can't i cannot stress this enough there is no end game to fiat currency. 
It is designed to keep inflating until it is virtually worthless. And that's why governments are okay with printing more and sending it out to the public because in their eyes, it's not a value anymore. It's just numbers at this point. I know I've kind of jumped around in this video, starting with Bitcoin and now jumping to the stimulus, but I'll try to tie those things in together right now. Now, the second stimulus bill, like I said, has been approved, but the things inside the package haven't necessarily been agreed upon yet. However, with every new stimulus bill that gets passed and starts getting sent out, it makes people like myself more and more worried about inflation and I guess the end game. More and more people are losing their faith in the USD and beginning to question it. And that's making them do more research into cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. I feel like Bitcoin has a bad rap because of what happened in 2018 as all the casual investors moved into it as the same way they would into regular investments. They noticed a lot of people buying Bitcoin and they thought, you know, they should too. And that kind of explains why Bitcoin's price went parabolic in the winter of 2018 and then had a massive crash. As the regular casual investors moved in, the savvy early adopter investors moved out and took their huge profits. You know, this left the casual investors at the top of the price range, taking massive losses and forever leaving a nasty taste of cryptocurrency in their mouths. And this will likely make them not trust Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies until it's booming again, making record highs and where they will buy in late only to get hit with massive sell offs and huge losses due to the early investors taking their profits again. But that is talking about investor psychology and that's not really what this video is about. But like I said earlier, what usually happens after the halving is a huge sell off and then a steady rise to record highs. This and the decreasing trust in the USD is becoming a more attractive outlook for econ economics. But don't just take it from me, I'm just a recent graduate with a finance degree. Take it from the wildly popular channel, Andre Jick. Now, Andre Jick makes YouTube videos just like myself about finance and personal finance and the stock market just only better. Now, he recently interviewed former Goldman Sachs uh, hedge fund manager, Raul Paul. Now, in this interview, they covered something that is very scary in my eyes, and it's actually called the doom loop. So, you know, it's got, it's got to live up to the name. Basically, and I'm going to be paraphrasing here, the huge age group known as the baby boomers are either already retired or near retirement because the average age of baby boomers is 66 years old. And when you retire, you don't have a huge source of income to fund your stock portfolio or your retirement accounts because you're retired. Instead, they're slowly taking money from those accounts to pay for things like their mortgages, their, their groceries, their medical bills, you know, essential things to live. This means that the largest age group in population is taking money away from the market. And coincidentally, it's the largest group to actually invest into the stock market and bond market for that matter. Obviously, the next largest is the Gen Xers, but millennials haven't nearly bought in as much. But what is weird is that stock prices have been going up, right? Well, the answer is yes, but it's been going up artificially. For around the past five years, companies have been buying back shares of their own companies, which makes the overall amount of shares for the public less, which increases the stock price. And what Raul has found is that most Gen Xers and millennials, when they do invest, they're either investing into ETFs or mutual funds because it's cheaper and more diversified. But those ETFs and mutual funds only work if the companies they diversify the funds in are still around. But the price of those individual stocks and companies are, are so high either by the boomers buying in over decades and, and raising the price over time or by the companies artificially raising their stock price by stock buybacks that young people like myself would rather diversify their small amount of funds in ETFs or mutual funds to have more diversified portfolios. We get more shares and more diversity rather than less shares and less diversified. Because millennials, and I'm not sure how Gen Z is doing, but I assume it's the same, I assume it's similar. Millennials are broke and for the most part in debt. So to wrap up Raul's thought process here, and, and I'll link the interview right here, and for all you Facebook viewers, I'm gonna link the video in the actual post. But to wrap it all up, he doesn't see things ending well with the stock market on how we know it today. His thought process is, why would anybody want to invest in the stock market right now? Because we're all at record highs and, it's, and all the boomers are gonna take the money out. Instead, he sees people moving into cryptocurrency and more specifically, Bitcoin. However, like myself, I don't know how long that's gonna be in Nobody really knows if it's going to happen or not. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. However, that's going to be it for me on this one, guys. If you guys like this little update on Bitcoins, the stimulus, and the outlook of the current market, let me know by hitting the like button. If you really like this video, me and my content, let me know by hitting the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put those in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get to them. That is going to be it for me on this one, guys. 
Remember to keep investing, keep doing your research, keep hitting the like button because I need those. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. And yada, yada, yada. Everybody knows this part of the story. Story, story. What am I, Russian? A story. Yada, yada, yada. Jesus. <laughs>